my name is Fiona, and I work at the patio department here at Cornell Farm. I also recently just graduated with my master's in environmental science and management from Portland State University, where my research focus was studying uh, pollinators within their urban habitat. And this is directly relatable to what we do here at Cornell Farm, so I wanted to share with you what I have learned here. So we are going to be putting together this four-part webinar series for you to learn about the native bees here in Portland, Oregon, how you can monitor them in your own garden and help to protect and promote them so that your gardens will thrive. So for this first webinar series, we're gonna be talking about what native bees are here in Portland, Oregon and what is threatening them right now. So there is a great diversity of native bees here in, in Oregon. There are over 500 species and it's important to protect this diversity because we need all of these, these different bees available. They, they pollinate all of the different flowers that we have in our gardens, as well as all of the natural flowers that are out in our landscape. And we also need them for all of the fruits and vegetables that we enjoy in our gardens. So it is really important that we kind of take the time to think about these pollinators when we're planning our gardens. And so that's what I'm here to help you with today. So the main threats to pollinators at the moment is habitat loss. They are uh, losing their habitat at uh, great rates due to urbanization and um, agriculture. And as they are being forced into smaller spaces, um, they are presented with new obstacles. So they are being exposed to pesticides, um, which can be deadly to them even if they are not the target insect it can still be deadly for them. And they are being crowded into these smaller spaces and being exposed to more diseases and pests and pathogens, which can be equally as dangerous for them. So it's important that we kind of take the time to think about how we can support these pollinators within our city um, so that we can provide that habitat and allow them to rejuvenate and come back with stronger populations. Within Oregon, there is a wide diversity of these bees. And identifying them could be very, very challenging, even for um, accomplished entomologists. It takes a lot of time to, to learn how to identify these. So what I did for my research and what I'd like to share with you today is um, practicing the Xerxes Society monitoring protocol um, for which you can go out into your own garden and monitor without um, any lethal methods. You don't have to kill any bees. Um, and you'll be able to I, see what flowers they are visiting and uh, group them without having to identify them to species. So there are 10 different uh, morpho groups, which are fairly easy to identify once you learn to look for them. So the morpho groups are honeybee, bumblebee, metallic green sweat bee, which are these beautiful green ones. We have the medium dark bee. They're kind of these smaller, um, little bit more rotund bees um, that have uh, stripes or they can be completely dark as well. There's the chap leg bees, which have these incredible hairs on their back legs to collect pollen. We also have the striped hairy belly bee, which that one, if you look on its underside, it has a very hairy belly, um, and it will have these distinguished stripes on top. There's also the tiny dark bee. These ones can often be mistaken for flies. They're very small and very quick, but they are actually bees. And then there's the striped sweat bee, which are again also very similar to the tiny dark, um, but they do have um, more characteristic stripes on their back. And then there are these other three um, non-bee morpho groups. There's fly, butterfly, and wasp. One of the trickiest things is identifying the difference between flies and bees. Flies have very short antennas that meet at the very front of their head, whereas bees have these longer antennas. Flies also have only uh, one set of wings, so two wings total, and bees have two sets of wings, so they have four wings total. And wasps are a little different as well, whereas um, bees and flies tend to be a little more round. Wasps will have kind of a pinched waist. They do also have um, two sets of wings, just like the, the bees. And then of course we have butterfly. So those are the categories that we are going to be looking at. Okay. Join us next week. Um, we're going to be um, actually going out and monitoring these. We'll review these morpho groups and try to see what we can find here at Cornell Farm. So you can join us by looking in your garden to see uh, what morpho groups you have as well.